Our celebration of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 continues on page four of your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of, of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. 
and the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Please stand for our sequence hymn, number 706, In Your Mercy, Lord, You Call Me.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. We hear Jesus today talking in the face of the Pharisees and the scribes who are less than thrilled with him. It's kind of a reoccurring theme, is it not? The religious authorities were like, oh, here he is again, hanging out with all these kind of questionable people. And he tells this story, tells these parables, parables of the kingdom. And I will tell you, I kind of had an epiphany this week reading these. I went, oh, these are about God. They're really about God's character, Jesus describing God to the Pharisees and to us. Because I've always thought of it was kind of describing us, you know, who among you would not go? As it reads here, it says, which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? Which one of us? All of us. Nobody's going to leave 99 and go look for one. Right? Oh, come on, you're not that earnest. That is bad time. That's bad stewardship. It's like, it's just a little sheep. But I think that we need to be honest. He was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes and making a point. Which one of you? None of them would have gone after the one. And that is what is such good news in this, is that we have a God that doesn't operate in our economy scale. That doesn't say, that's not a very good investment. I better let that one go. Isn't that great news? That God will always come after us. Never will shut the door. And the other thing that I've noticed about these lost things, parables, whether it's a coin or whether it's a sheep, or a prodigal son. You know what God never does in these stories? Scold. There's none of this. You know, it's like, hey, sheep, huh? put your own shoulder, let's have a party. We're going to rejoice because you've been found. There's just a rejoicing. It's not a, why did you do that? Isn't it interesting? God's character is not one of scolding. It's not the way God's put together. 
And so it's amazing. You know, you the prodigal son, you know, the father throws a party. It really ticks off the older brother. But there's this character of God that says all are welcome. You ever wonder where we got that mission? We welcome all in the name of Christ. It's from this, the parables of the kingdom. And it's so important for us to look at this because as our bishop says, theology really matters. And when you say theology, people might think of seminary or something like heady with books. No, 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 theology, how you see God. How would you describe God to a stranger? How would you describe God to yourself really matters because I am aware that there are competing voices in our world because there's plenty of voices that say that God is a merciless judge. It's kind of saying, you better or else. And if you don't, you're going to burn. And we might... She's paying attention. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, Liliana. But there's this idea of like, like God's, gonna, the, God's the boogeyman or something. And that theology is really, in my opinion, dangerous, but it, it is powerful. And so how we see God really matters. Can we hear Jesus today in saying that God is never ever going to give up on you, that there is nowhere you can go outside of the bounds of God's grace and love. As I have learned from Anne, there's nothing you can do to make God love you more, and there's nothing you can do to make God love you less. It just is. That theology, when I'm informed by that, and that's the way I see God, wow, that's an incredible place to be. But if you're like me, that's hard to accept sometimes. It's hard to really believe that I really am that lovable? Really? Because I know me. You know, you know your corners. You know your shadows. And you're like, mm, really? And God says, yes. Even you, Robbie. I'd go into the corners and pull you out of the ditch and put you on my shoulders and throw a party for you. What I think is so important about this is seeing the character of God this way. When I can accept that, when I really can let it reside in who I am, it's incredible how me being lovable in my own mind allows me to love you so much easier. Do you know that? That experience of like, oh, I'm kind of broken. But, you know, that great phrase of cracks are where the light gets in. You know, that's good. And I can love you. I've also noticed this with forgiveness. Who's the hardest person to forgive? Yourself. At least it is for me. I'm pretty good at offering grace. But what I have found is when I really get hard on myself, I start getting hard on other people, too. We need to be able to receive this love that God so freely gives to us in this world that so desperately needs it. As we think about our theology, as we think about a God that will not give up on us, it is so powerful as we think about not only receiving it for us, but then what we do when we go out these doors. In some ways, that's all church is, really boiled down. It's coming every week and going, oh yeah, God loves me. Okay, I gotta get out there and do the same thing. Really, it kind of comes down to that. It's being reminded that we are God's kids and we're to go out there and treat all those other people like God's kids because they are. But it's hard work. This lost and found business, it's, it's amazing, isn't it, how you can hold two things in such tension in such an immediate moment? 
being lost? You ever felt that? Being really lost? I, my brain goes to about five years old, and I'm like in a grocery store, and I'm like, doo -doo 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 -doo. Mom? Ah! And freaking out. And I've had the other experience as well of not being mom, but being dad, and going, Ugh! where'd they go? And that panic, terror that you experience when you're lost or have lost something. But when you're reunited, it's amazing, isn't it? That experience of not just relief, but as Jesus talks, joy. It's like, oh, oh, it's awesome. The other thing that I like to think about with this lost and found business is hide and seek. How much we love being found. Like we hide and we want to hide really well, but if you want to just see the way we are as human beings, play hide and seek with a toddler. We hide. Go hide. I'll find you. And they hide for about four seconds. And they start rustling or something like that, moving around. Or they're like me when I was that age and I just jump out and go, here we are. We desire so much to be found. And the good news that we hear in this gospel, that God's character is all about that. About searching us out wherever we are. Not to scold us. Not to say, you better be different. But to say, I love you. You're my kids. There is more joy in heaven when you are found than I can even express. So this day as we gather back on kickoff Sunday, I invite us to think about our theology. How do we picture God? What do we think God's character is? And I invite us to listen to Jesus. Jesus tells us that God's character is one of love, of acceptance, of gathering in. And as we contemplate that, I don't want us to stop there. I want us to realize that that gives us a responsibility and a privilege to go out into the world and be what? Christ-like. To love those in the world, in our families, in our schools, in our workplaces, with that kind of love that doesn't say, I don't need you, I got 99 more. But saying that we are less than when we are not together. Examine your theology and know that you are loved beyond your wildest dreams by a God that will never let you go. Amen. Please stand as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life to come. Amen. Searching God as you stop at nothing to find whatever is lost and celebrate with unbounded joy when it is found. So inspire us to sweep the streets of the world to uncover those forgotten and ignored. May our welcome be as constant and abiding as your love and grace. Hear us as we pray to you. God of wisdom, we pray for peace throughout the world and compassion and justice to guide all in authority. May we be renewed in our desire to create bridges wherever there is division, to work for calm wherever there is strife. Yes. Divine Creator, bless this earth and hear our gratitude for the Abenaki people, its traditional custodians. Bless us as we seek to be careful stewards of your creation and as we pray for those places suffering from heat and drought, fire and flood. God of mercy, we pray for all without hope this day, for those without food or shelter, for the sick, the suffering, and all in danger. Give us courage to meet others in their need. Show us how to be the hope. I invite you to offer the names of those you carry on your hearts. God of peace, we pray for all who mourn, that they may be comforted, and all who have died, that they may rest in your eternal mystery. May we remember that no one will ever be lost to you. God of new beginnings, fill this place with your Holy Spirit. Inspire us to love one another as you have loved us. Draw us closer to one another and closer to you. Give us the courage to stand in solidarity with all who are oppressed and the compassion to love all who are in need, that we may follow in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Would you please stand? God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer to one another a sign of God's peace. Please be seated. Good morning, and welcome to St. John's on this kickoff Sunday. It is great to have you all here. I hope you had a great summer. Some of you are were in the garden um, with us. Some of you weren't, and I'm not wagging a finger at you. 
you are worshiping God somewhere else. I appreciate that. But it is great to be here together. Let us all remember that no matter who we are or where we are on our journey of faith, not only are we welcome here at St. John's, we are welcome especially at God's table. So if you desire to receive Holy Communion, please know that all are invited and welcome to receive. And something that if you um, have been coming to church for the last f few years, um, the common cup is back today. So we'll have wine. Um, and just please know that it, that is um, the rubric stands. All may, none must. So if you are really excited about that, yay. If you're not, you do not have to take it. So just know that. But today we will have the wine. Um, we have lots going on, but I want Anne to talk about an opportunity that's coming up this week. You may have seen in the e-news that um, we're hoping for a new group to, to form at St. John's, um, and um, it's going to be an opportunity to explore loss for folks um, who've lost a loved one and would just like to come together with other parishioners to, to, to be on the journey together. And Anne McSally is going to um, lead that, and um, they're going to meet on Wednesday the 14th um, at 12.30 from 12.30 to 2, in the garden just by the tree. Um, but if that is too short notice for you and you can't make it, please come next door, sign up for that and lots of other things in the, at the ministry table, and then we'll at least know that that's something that you're interested in, even if you can't um, come on Wednesday. So that's um, an opportunity to um, explore loss together. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. So next door, we have coffee hour in Thaxter Hall. Some of you may not have been in there since it's been renovated. So come over and join us. Another thing we're doing, as she just mentioned, Ann just mentioned, is there's a ministry table with lots of opportunities. The other thing we're doing is trying to get our information systems really accurate. And you might say, why do you need to do that? One, so that we can contact you, but other, so that we can do this thing that many of you have asked for, a pictorial directory. And so everybody says, I want a pictorial directory. And I look at them, I say, will you run that show? And they're like, no. And I'm like, that's why we don't have one. But we have a system set up where you can go check at the kiosk there at the Helene Wemple is um, personing that um, computer. You can check your information, make sure it's in there, then go down the table and Zuri, her son, will take your picture. And so hopefully by Advent, we will be able to do this with information that is somewhat accurate and um and that we won't wait five years because you remember when we used to do this with olin mills we did this and you'd come and you sign up and then the kids would get the pictures and by the time my son who was seven he had a beard by the time he actually got it it took forever and so we're trying to do this in a fast way so please come next door and participate in that we'll be doing that all month but please do that today um there are it's a lot going on in here, so please read it. There is a retreat at the end of the month, which we have been doing for years. It's filling up. It's at, it's at Mara Vista. It's great experience for us to just mix it up as a community and just have a great time together. So please consider doing that. There's a lot more. Oh, one more thing. Do you want to be an acolyte? Do you want to do what they're doing? It doesn't matter how old you are. It really doesn't. If you do, stay after church, and I'm going to do a little training at, right after the service. Um, so acolytes of all ages are welcome to join me for that. We're having a party for Anne next week. So some of you have said, is Anne retiring? No. Is Anne working less? Yes. She's going from three-quarter time, which is um, fancy talk for full-time. It just meant when she was in town, she worked full-time, and when she was in London, she wasn't working full-time, but that was basically full-time. She is going to quarter time, which is 10 hours a week. If you come on Sunday, you're going to see her a lot. But there's a lot of things that she did behind the scenes that are, she's no longer going to do. But next week, we're going to just celebrate almost 10 years of your ministry, and she's going to preach a whopper of a sermon. It'll probably be about 45 minutes long, <laughs> and it'll be awesome. But Anne, just in advance, we love you. Thank you.
as our children come in, I think this is very appropriate. We, this, there's a lot going on in the world. Here we are on kickoff Sunday, we're excited, there's all this goodness, and it's also 9-11. And also, Queen Elizabeth died this week. And what I am learning more and more as I attempt to live this life well, is that light and dark live right up next to each other all the time. And I am so grateful that we have a community that we can hold it together. We can hold the light and celebrate it, but also sit with the darkness. And so this day, I encourage you to say your prayers. Thank you for taking the time to be here for this hour or so, that we can be together to hold this reality. Pray for those who lost their lives in 9-11. Pray for our world that has changed so much since then. And pray for Queen Elizabeth and Britain and the world. And thank you for being a community that is willing to hold the light and the darkness together. Rest eternal grant to Elizabeth, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The flowers on the altar are given to the glory of God in celebration of St. John's Parish and staff.
given by the Altar Guild. Our celebration continues with the great thanksgiving, which can be found on page 10 of your bulletin. Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in us. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this 
day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love, both this day and always. Amen.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.